now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July the 18th. Today across the wide world of tropics, we have three active tropical cyclones. Hurricane Felicia in the eastern Pacific, still a powerful category for a hurricane. Tropical Storm Guillermo, also in the eastern Pacific, heading out to sea. Not expected to become a hurricane, uh, but could peak as a mid-grade to high-grade tropical storm. And Tropical Storm Infa in the western Pacific, which could become a significant typhoon for the southern Japanese islands, uh, Taiwan and China. It's day 199 of 2021, and so far this year we've had 41 storms form across the world. In the Atlantic Basin, it's day 48 of hurricane season, and it's all quiet thankfully. No tropical cyclones and no areas of interest tonight. Um, and I wouldn't expect that to change um, over the next week or two, as um, looks like we're going to have a pretty inactive Atlantic for the next week or two. Although, as we get towards and into August, I'd expect uh, activity to increase as you'd expect as you get towards the peak of hurricane season. In the Eastern Pacific, it's a completely different story on day 64 of hurricane season. Hurricane Felicia uh, peaked earlier today and it is still going on as a Category 4, tiny Category 4 hurricane and is now on a weakening trend. We're fairly sure that this is it. This is going to be its uh, weakening trend um, as it moves into cooler seasonal temperatures and contends with more dry air. Tropical Storm Guillermo is off the coast of Mexico there. You can see uh, it's tracking generally west uh, northwest and as it heads generally that way it will run into cooler sea surface temperatures and a more stable environment which will halt intensification so that's why we that along with its large size is why we really don't think it's going to uh, get to hurricane intensity in the western pacific we've got three uh, areas marked on our map tropical storm infa which, as I said, could become a significant typhoon, an area of interest towards the latter part of the five-day period, just to the southeast of it. We're putting 60% on that tonight. And Invest 99W, now 90% in the South China Sea. Uh, this one could, is likely to become a tropical storm, and some models are hinting at this getting near or at typhoon status before coming into southern China. We'll keep you updated on all of these systems, of course. In the North Atlantic, uh, and if you look in the ocean, there's not much thunderstorm activity to be found. If you find some good thunderstorm activity, you have to go into Mexico, Central America, and the United States. Um, and across the ocean, generally quiet, and I wouldn't expect it to change much over the next week or two um, as we are looking at a quiet Atlantic now. We can see the Eastern Pacific is quite active with very tiny Hurricane Felicia. I mean, you don't get a full perspective of how tiny Felicia is until you look in a map like this. Uh, it's extremely tiny. Um, and you can compare it to the size of Tropical Storm Guillermo off to its northeast. Um, they're night and day, uh, size-wise, um, intensity-wise as well, as Guillermo is not expected, as I said earlier, to become a hurricane. It's larger size as it's moving into cooler surface temperatures makes it, you know, where it's not likely to become a hurricane. Um, likely to become a mid-grade mid tropical storm at least though. And Felicia, as I said, is on a weakening trend. We think it's we think it's finally on its weakening trend. Um, I know we've, you know, the National Hurricane Center has said it's going to be on a weakening trend for a while. Let's hope that this is the final weakening trend for Felicia. In the Western Pacific, you can see Tropical Storm Infa there. Most convection off towards the eastern side of it. But we'll have a video update tonight breaking down the full forecast of Infa. And as always, we'll keep you updated um, as Infa goes on in its lifetime. But you can also see Invest 99W in the South China Sea. A little nice blow up of convection there. 90% um, chance on that. So it's very likely to become a tropical cyclone. The current forecast of Tropical Storm Infa, you can see from the JTWC. Uh, Bringing this to typhoon status right as it uh, goes through the southern Japanese islands and heading generally westward towards uh, China, passing north of Taiwan. Although I don't want people in Taiwan to look at this cone and say, well, the center is going north of me. I'm safe. This 
is, you know, this will have impacts well away from the center. You can see that red outline there. That's, I believe, 34 knot winds. Um, that's tropical storm force winds. And those can cause uh, significant impacts. Uh, so just because you're not going to get the center, um, you need to keep an eye on infa. And also, along with that, some models, and in particular the GFS, is showing this coming further south uh, through the Japanese islands, and then potentially clipping northeastern Taiwan as it heads towards China. So we really need to watch Infa on what it does. The forecast for Felicia, I'm not going to spend much time on this. You can see Hawaii on the wet, far western side of this cone, and it's far away from the five-day forecast cone, expected to be tropical depression, uh, well weakened from what it is now, um, right now as a category four still on the Saffir Simpson scale. You see the temperatures across the world today, you can see where Felicia and Guillermo are, uh, fairly warm, but they'll both soon be moving into colder sea surface temperatures as time goes on, and in the North Atlantic, it's still warming up, and uh, I really will need to be we really will need to be watching the North Atlantic along with uh, basins like the Western Pacific this year for uh, really a lot of activity, uh, hurricane and typhoon wise. The Northern Indian Ocean is generally uh, warm in the Northern in the Bay of Bengal and Eastern uh, Arabian Sea, generally 30 degrees Celsius. As you get towards Africa in the Arabian Sea, it goes down a bit. In the Southern Hemisphere, you can see it's cooling off. Um, there as well in the southern Indian Ocean and towards the Australian region and in the Western Pacific It's piping hot for 99W and INFA and the area of interest to the southeast of INFA So we're looking at an active period coming up in the Western Pacific and the sea surface temperatures are surely uh, favorable for all those storms Speaking of sea surface temperatures, here's the sea surface temperature anomaly map. You can see the Atlantic Basin generally above average. There is a nice little pocket there from around the central Atlantic through to the western Gulf of Mexico, where it's around near average. As you get towards Florida, it's below average, but don't let those blue colors fool you. They are still warm enough for tropical cyclone formation. In the eastern Pacific, as you stay towards Mexico, it's above average, but as you head west towards uh, Hawaii, it starts to get near to below average. And as you head further west into the western Pacific, you can see pretty much the entire basin is above average. And uh, it's not really, I'm not really seeing many pockets of below average. The only one I see is that could be an impact to a tropical cyclone uh, in the future. It could be maybe that one south of Japan uh, that, that uh, is near Infa and that area of interest to its southeast. Other than that, it's piping hot in the Western Pacific, and same case in the Indian Ocean, although we don't typically see tropical cyclones form this time of year due to the monsoonal type pattern uh, set up across the Indian Ocean. On this day, on July the 18th, 1991, Tropical Storm Enrique was in the Eastern Pacific, uh, would go on to become a hurricane, uh, and eventually weaken and pass north of Hawaii and tropical uh, sorry typhoon Amy was north and uh, uh, was north of the Philippines north of Luzon and south of Taiwan peaking as an incredible category 4 typhoon super typhoon I believe it was um, quite a remarkable storm uh, to track um, if you were around at that time and you can see that satellite imagery there quite an incredible structure on that storm. You can see the little eye in the center there. Um, quite a incredible storm on this day. Well, as we look towards the naming lists, we hope that we don't have to see one get colored on the Atlantic storm names list, but if it were to get named, we'd be looking for Fred, followed by Grace. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Hilda. In the Central Pacific, we've said it so many times, we're not getting tired of it yet, we're still waiting on Hone. In the Western Pacific, now that Infa is named, Sampaka is next, followed by the Partak. We could get Sampaka fairly soon. In the Northern Indian Ocean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to see it fairly soon, but the next name is Gulab in the Northern Indian Ocean. In the Australian region, the next name is Paddy. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the next name is Anna. 
and in the South uh, Pacific, the next name we're looking out for is Cody. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.